Hey everybody, Dave Lerner, Venture Studio, welcome. My next guest is the CEO of Inspired Marketing. He's the co-founder of Talent.me. He's also a former professional athlete. It's my pleasure to welcome Lewis Howes to the show. Lewis, great to have you here, man. Thanks for having me, man, appreciate it. Lewis, how did you go from being a professional athlete to becoming an entrepreneur? How did that happen? Uh, it was an unfortunate turn of events. I was playing arena football. Have you ever seen the game? I have, football? with the walls and everything, yeah. yeah. Very physical, more physical than the outdoor game. And I, uh, in the second game of my rookie season, I was actually playing wide receiver, and I was going out for a pass, and I dove for a football into the wall, caught the ball, and broke my wrist into the wall. So uh, for, I made the mistake for the next 14 games of the season to play with a broken wrist, as opposed to giving surgery right then, I played on it. And uh, <clears throat> at the end of the year, I had to have surgery. They took a bone out of my hip, put it into my wrist, and I was in a full arm cast from here to here for six months. I got it. I spent that six months on my sister's couch, and uh, from there, I tried to figure out uh, how could I gain more opportunities in business or how could I in get a career or something. A good mentor of mine suggested getting on LinkedIn. He said LinkedIn is a great opportunity for you to build your network, meet the right people. What is so special about LinkedIn? The cool crowd here, we talk about Twitter, Facebook. Sure. Oh, no one talks about LinkedIn. <clears throat> sure. I think it's cool. Because it's really sexy because you can build your business. I think Facebook and Twitter and YouTube, they all have a place. But LinkedIn, it's got the, the highest average household income uh, based off of every other social networking site. $109,000 is the average household income. And 45% of the users on LinkedIn are business decision makers. So on Facebook and Twitter, it's under $100,000 is the average household income. And it's about the 25 to 29% range in there are business decision makers. So you're dealing with people who have more money who can make more decisions to help you grow your business. All right, so on LinkedIn, what are people doing wrong? Whenever I talk to people about LinkedIn, they say, you know what, LinkedIn doesn't work for me. I say, oh yeah, why? And they say, well, you know, I set up an account about three years ago and I added some connections, but I haven't gotten anything from it. All I get are these emails from people wanting to connect and that's it. Nothing happens for me. And I say, well, what have you done on LinkedIn? What action have you taken? Have you optimized your profile? Have you made introductions? Have you recommended people? Have you gotten um, engaged in groups? Have you started your own group? Have you answered questions, right? You get out of LinkedIn what you put into it, just like anything. So I think the mistake people make is just setting up their profile and doing nothing. Okay, for our audience watching here, what are maybe three things that each one of us can do immediately to increase the opt or optimize our usage sure. of LinkedIn? Generically, the three things that I would say is one, optimize your profile 100%. So by that, I mean don't just fill it out 100% like it tells you on LinkedIn. Tell people who you are, who you help, and how you help them. The second thing is you want to really start connecting with the different groups. In my opinion, groups are the biggest asset on all social networking sites, especially if you're a group owner. So you want to join groups where your audience is hanging out, and you also want to create your own group for your audience. Because once you're the owner of that group, you can message those members once a week, and it's free email marketing. Can you give us a couple of examples of you know people, entrepreneurs that you've helped in your career? Sure. Yeah. One example would be great from uh, Twitter. A guy named Max Goldberg. He, he used to work in the financial business, and but he loved. He had a passion for organic foods, he, and he wanted to become an expert on sharing information to others out there on how to live healthy, what to eat, what not to eat, things like that. So he signed up for one of our courses on Twitter and uh, had about maybe 100 or 200 followers at the time and had no clue what he was doing. We got him to over 10,000 followers pretty fast by using our strategies. And within a few months, he was now interviewing the CEO of Whole Foods and had his blog getting exposure all over the world and specifically got a, uh, a New York Times article about how he was a top organic foods expert and they mentioned how it became that through Twitter. All right, so you've got the webinars going on, but you've now founded your own company, Talent.me. Tell us what that is. So currently it's a, it's a Facebook app. It allows you to tap into the uh, 800 million users on Facebook to leverage talented individuals in your friend network. So it's all about finding the talents in your network, and we're making it easy for recruiters to find talented professionals. All right, how do I get on Talent.me? It's just a Facebook app. You can go to talent.me on a new browser or you can search talent.me on Facebook and just connect via Facebook. I mentor a lot of young entrepreneurs. They say often, I'm too busy to manage all these networks. Sure. What's the right response to someone who might think that way? I think you need to figure out what your goal is first. And it's a, it's a tricky question. So figuring out what your goal is first 
you can then figure out, all right, I've got 10 minutes a day where I'm going to manage this. And just figure out what works for you. You don't have to feel overwhelmed. At least have your profiles optimized on these different sites. Some of it you don't need to go into and really log in at all. Some you can go in and update things every now and then. Others, depending on your goal, if you're looking for more leads and more traffic, you may want to be posting more information. So it really depends on your goal, but you can definitely manage it all. So there are a lot of freelancers, for example, out there. What's the best way they can get leads and clients? There's one specific thing that I teach people who want to get lots of clients every single month, um, and that is answering questions on LinkedIn. So a lot of people don't even know that this is available. If you go in there, people are asking tons of questions, and a lot of people are responding. So this is what you want to do. This is two steps. You want to respond to the, the, the question publicly so that the entire network can see it, so that your answer is out there. However, since there's 20 or 50 or maybe even 100 responses, there's a little reply privately right below the question that the person has asked. So you want to click that reply private uh, right after you answer publicly and respond to the person privately by saying, I just left a response for you publicly on this question. However, I'm more than happy to jump on the phone for 15 minutes. By doing that, every person that says they do that, they get a lot of opportunities through people either calling them or setting up an email consultation and then they close them right there on the phone. If you try to compete with people who are answering all these questions, it's a lot harder. But when you get it on the phone, it's a lot easier to get that sale. You've transitioned from being a professional athlete into an entrepreneur. Tell us a little about that journey. Initially, it was extremely difficult. I mean, being a professional athlete, my only goal and focus was playing football, being a pro football player. So I didn't have a backup plan. So for me, I was extremely depressed for about a year because I wasn't sure what was going to happen next. There was a lot of uncertainty. But I think being an athlete gave me the confidence to take action and not be afraid to fail. So what's next for Lewis House? So I've got two main things I'm working on right now, and they're not really business related. And then one is I'm working on becoming a, on the USA national team for a sport called team handball. Everywhere else in the world it's called handball, but here in the US it's called team handball. Number two, I'm working on a uh, video documentary series where I'm actually going to be competing against some of the top athletes in the world in their own sport and then doing a post interview about the entire experience. Trying to learn about myself a little bit more, learn about why the best athletes in the world are so great and what they have that other people can, can learn about as well. Lewis, best of luck. Thanks so much for coming on the show. I appreciate it. Thanks so much. Venture Studio in association with Mashable is brought to you by Square One Bank.